It is February 5th, 2020. This is Atlanta United FC Weekly, a home before dark podcast. Choo, choo. The king Wh- kit. The king kit? I don't know. What are they calling it? Oh, so, obviously nobody's going to get this. I'm going to sound like such a freaking like hipster or whatever, but um, the title of it was Fit for a King. Yeah. That's like one of my favorite like metalcore bands <laughs> that I posted in there. I was like, if they don't play Death Grip, I riot. No one. Nobody got it. No of course, nobody got it. No I am Tim Herb. As always, I'm joined by my lovely co host, Mr. Kevin Bradley, in his kbowbow.com t shirt. Yeah. He's got his Real Sociedad shirt from awaydays.com. I think the Home Before Dark HB4D still works on awaydays.com. <laughs> you guys, if you guys are going to. Uh, if you guys are going to go buy an Away Days mystery kit, use HB4D. See if it still works. Yeah, I think it's. I I'm going to get a new one. It's. I haven't gotten one this year yet, so. Oh, I, I haven't got either. This one last year, I haven't so. either. Um, or was this two years ago? I can't remember. It was last year. No, this was two years ago. Shit, was it? Yeah, I didn't get one last year. Huh? I got the, I got, I got the Meow Wolf last. year. All I have are the long shirts. The yeah. uh, the long shirts. Speaking of long shirts, happy birthday. To Mr. Soccer down here, Mr. 92.9, Mr. Kangol Hat himself. Yeah. Happy 21st birthday. You guys go out. Jason Longshore is finally legal. I know. Go buy that man a drink. He deserves one. He is the godfather and, of Atlanta sports media, or Atlanta soccer sports media. And happy birthday to our buddy, Matthew Cody. <laughs> <laughs> You're only two or a week late. Oh, That's hilarious. I did, I did it. I texted him and I was like, oh, fuck. I screwed this yeah. up. Yeah. Andy Watkins, the ball's on these guys to go up head to head against the kit reveal. You are correct. Thank you guys for joining us as always. You can if, always go side by side. If you are watching us on YouTube, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, Holcomb icon. Make sure that you guys know whenever we go live. Also, if you're listening we're, to us, we're on, actually the pre we're the preview show for the kit reveal. It's true. At 30, it's so. true. Should we ruin it all? <laughs> <laughs> Should we just post the pictures we have? <laughs> That'd be pretty great. Is anybody uh, watching at the kit reveal Will, right now? Will is because he. I definitely saw a post of him at the thing just a little bit ago from Kelly. <laughs> oh dear God. Um, I'm going to try and grab the dog to come back. <laughs> He's been eating like, his feet, and I need to keep tabs on I him. I like that Kendrick said that he thought that this was the kit reveal. It's true. It would have been really great. Again, two weeks, two shows in a row. We start, and we get no less than five minutes in, and Tim completely abandons me. We're just on our way to another two-star review again this week, which I guess that's a good segue into talking about that. However you're finding us, if it is on a platform that allows you to leave leave a review or comment, please do so to hear it read aloud on the show on iTunes. We appreciate all stars and reviews. And we did get a new one this past you have it ready? week. Uh, I don't yet. I was it is just a up. testament that we are not the show for everybody, but I appreciate it. It's fine. It's, it's we're not it, changing it. It is what it is. So um, review is called play two stars by food broker from time to time. I listen, not enough talk about soccer too much about silly lives. Look, man, we're silly people and we do silly things. It's kind of what our what our brand's based off of, if you want to call it that. So As yeah. I sit underneath a desk putting a sock on a dog. Oh, so apparently you only have a one hour slot at the whole event thing tonight. I didn't realize that. Will said he got kicked out. That's stupid. That's really weird. Really, really weird. Uh what else we got going on? Um Michelle, I have no idea what it looks like. I was relying on Franco's girl. Uh, our New Jersey isn't orange with Japanese letters. I'm disappointed. Wait, you guys are now the two podcasts on all soccer SB nation. Um, He's asking if we're all, we're at the top. Oh, top. Got it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's soccer down, or not soccer down here. Um, Dirty South Soccer had the the best, highest rated podcasts on um on the SB Nation. We are? Yeah, we are. Okay. Yeah, we, we tops. are. We're tops. Yeah, we're tops. How many... St- no, no. How many non-five-star reviews from He Who Shall but Not Be Named? No, I'm not giving him any credit because I love that... He- <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I refuse. I refuse. Um, No, not quite. That's... uh, Ayahuasca is still a thing. I went, I, oh, speaking of ayahuasca, 
<laughs> of course, I got a I got a text from Dan after we recorded last time. He's like, "What are you doing? Is this for real? <laughs> are you really gonna do it?" And so uh, I went and I went and had lunch with uh, Mr. Dan James himself. He's last still alive. Week. He is. He is. I had a great, great chat and catch up with him. Um, yeah, he's doing well. Hopefully, we can get him on here soon. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. We're, sorry, we didn't record on Monday night. Yeah, I had I had a flight early on and uh, on Tuesday morning. It happens. You got a good old Jacksonville for a day trip. Yeah. So what else new since the last hour? So um, we have a new signing. Well, let's before that, because okay. we want to skip soccer. We'll talk about our silly lives <laughs> more. <laughs> so one of the things we did talk about was that the uh, season ticket founding member packages would be shipping out. And those finally I should have brought mine in here, but I guess it could be a spoiler for some people. Yeah. Yeah. But those did start getting delivered. I mean, might as well talk about it. Right. I think it's been, Why not? Yeah. It's been over a week. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool new way to up the ante in the packaging and fun and excitement surrounding the new season. So for those of you who don't know, um, or if you haven't gotten yours and you don't want to hear about it, please fast forward a few minutes and come back. So, um, so yeah, they sent out big gold bar packaging, uh, again, just leaning into the gold standard that Atlanta United has been and pushing the, the golden spike motif even more. Um, I'm glad. I, I think one of the big criticisms by a lot of people with the um, this thing, actually, the uh, bottle opener was that it was a gold spike, but it was also a bottle opener, which was kind of cool. But for those people that don't really need a bottle opener, it's like, I just wanted a golden spike. So they made good on that. Yeah. Actually sent a golden spike out to everybody. And then they sent a series of gold coins, which neither you nor I have really dug into. No, has anybody in the trap who's listening or, again? Spoiler alert, anybody who hasn't received their um, season ticket season ticket um, premium, I guess, that comes with it. Um, has anybody done the whole scavenger hunt thing or scanned the coins inside of the app? I have yet to do it. So I start a poker game with those things. Might as well. Yeah. Like, could, oh, man. Will they fit on a Pandora bracelet, do you think? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Brit. Day, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. I got you a Pandora bracelet for your, <laughs> for your Lady United charm. Uh, you shouldn't yeah. have. Yeah, exactly. You shouldn't have. No, you really, seriously really should, you, should. You really have. should not have. <laughs> okay, so they're time-gated. Joe Johnson saying some aren't available yet to scan. Um, Andy's saying that you get a free flag. Really? I already have so many flags in my house. I know. I know. And there's so many that are not open. We go to, because Atlanta United's at all of the art festivals that we go and yeah. sell at. Yeah. And they always have a tent. And they're always coming by because they see Angie's Kings yeah. of the South stuff. And they're like tossing us yeah. all the stuff that they have. It's just all lined up. I just want to make a giant quilt out of it. I want to have enough to make a quilt. And that's, that's my goal. I will make a coat out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. I like that a lot. Because Angie's, Judy, I hope you're listening and watching. Judy, we miss Judy, you. Judy. Uh, oh, Kendrick, I, was I would very much the coins like weren't chocolate coins. That would have been good too. Yeah, I would very much like one of the United Atlanta United flags turned into a a jacket. Uh, I'll allow my old poker jacket, which was your jacket. It was a, you had a really like you had a really small. Probably looking back at it now, both of us would probably fit into it comfortably. We had a really small like smoker's jacket. It was like a tuxedo jacket. It was red and it had a black had black lapels. I vaguely and remember I stole that. it from you I vaguely it's like remember junior that. year and it would come up to like that's right the middle of my forearms right. <laughs> and I wear it the poker I wear it every night we played poker and right. uh, it ended up being a good luck charm. Oh man! All right, so yeah, those those got shipped out and delivered, so pretty exciting. Um, obviously, no new cards associated yeah. with it or anything like that. I'm Yours not heartbroken over that. In the trash. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very true. Uh, enough about our silly lives. We're talking about Atlanta United related stuff. Um, yeah, exactly. The so we had a friendly this weekend against Elfsborg from Sweden. Yep. One yep. one. Yep. Seem like there's some positives to take away from it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, How excited are you for Brooks Lennon? Yeah, that that was one of the more excited. I did. I only watched the highlights from the Philly game, which I guess that was really all that was available. Um, 
So yeah, getting to see Brooks Lennon play and um, oh, fuck, this is this is where it's terrible because there's so many new, Mulraney, Jake yeah, Mulraney, Mulraney. I didn't see much and he didn't play in the first half. So um, it was somebody else that starts with an M. Mesa. Mesa, yeah, yeah. Seeing him play was great. It feels weird because there's so many new faces and I've been so detached from the club. It's tough to really reconcile that with the new lineup it's like i'm looking for the familiar faces and to see how the front three starts to link up and uh kevin egan during the broadcast actually had a really good point about that during the game where a lot of people are looking to see how these communities inside the 11 are starting to work so how's the back line functioning with new faces intermixed into we ran a back three in that game um how is the front three looking with barco pity and um Martinez. And so that's a lot of what I was looking at and trying to see how these players interlace with one another. You know, um, it, it was really good. It was really good, though, to see Brooks Lennon play. And um, also, fucking hell, man. It's, it's just, it's just exciting to be back in the mix again of a new season coming up. So, yeah. I mean, Joseph seems very focused. PD yeah. is scoring with. With quite uh, yeah. quite a pace, yeah, he seems very comfortable. Yeah. He seems he's scoring with his right foot. Um, I the Brooks Lennon thing to me is the most interesting because I people were not giving him a fair shake before he even took on the field, yeah. right? Yeah. Because of Gressel, right? And it's not really his fault. I mean, the fan base, I, and I don't blame them at all. Whatever you want to say about Julian Gressel's defensive acumen, what have you, he was very endearing to fans. Everybody loved him. He was part of our successes and he, he played a crucial role in Joseph yeah. breaking records. We talked yeah. about that before, but at the same time, as soon as the season was over, we signed Brooks Lennon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or and we traded for him, whatever you want to say. Um, and my immediate thought was he's a replacement for Gressel. If we lose Gressel, right? I think right. we talked about that whenever that happened was, if we aren't able to design Gressel, then Brooks Lennon's going to come in, and if not, he's going to play behind him. And he, dude, he looks, he adds a completely different element yeah. to this team. Well, just his speed and pace on the ball. You know, right. there there was a couple of times early on in that game where I was I was a little concerned at first just because of his hesitancy to just release the the ball off of a first or second touch. But as the game wore on, it seemed to be a lot. Um, a lot more natural for him to do that. And he almost ends up linking up with Heinemann on a really, really good run of play. And that's another big point to make here is Heinemann in the midfield where we've seen him really show out in the two uh, friendlies that we've had so far. I guess it's three if you if you count Red Bulls, right? Because we had that one yeah, too. Yeah, there were two um, like behind closed doors right, friendlies. Right, and but uh, Heinemann, his speed from the top of – the top of – the back 18 through that midfield on the ball has been, was really, really fun to watch um, just to see him take space, blow through the midfield, split defenders, and then create opportunities up top was really nice. Um, the other thing I noticed was that Joseph was playing back a little bit more, which we saw that start to take shape last year where he was playing more back behind the opposing teams, uh, 18 more towards a central midfield position and then obviously he's going to do what he's going to want to do and stay on that back shoulder of defenders and then creep in past the back line waiting and sitting on that cross but uh saw that start to take shape a little bit more and then the the other big thing that i noticed a lot which we all were really really excited to see last year which was the safety and security of the back line in possession under duress which was really nice to see that they were having passing plays in and around our 18 with their front line challenging the ball and they didn't look panicked or anything. And it actually ended up forcing their midfield and their forwards more towards that side of the field to allow Brooks Lennon, Hindman and others to get forward and make that counter play, which is, which is nice. So I think, you know, it's still a very small sample size, but my hope here is that we may see this season be a combination of those first two years of Atlanta United in the offensive playmaking ability on a quick counter and quick, fast-paced offensive tactic combined with the more possession-based style of what we saw last year. I'm, 
I don't I don't know how to respond to that. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I have no response. We have no response. That's so, perfect. So yeah. I, no, I, I'm I, optimistic. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the experience, I mean that's part of the reason we brought Mesa into the into the fold, right? Was yeah. LGP maybe not meshing necessarily with Frank DeBoer and uh, him wanting a new start, maybe. I, I, I still don't know if it's necessarily... Has anybody, has anybody come out and said what exactly went down, why we traded him, why did he just want out? Tito? No, LGP. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I missed you mentioning LGP. Yeah, I don't know. In terms of... Yeah, anyway, but bringing Meza in, you're talking about a 29-year-old player with a load of, you know... You know, uh, it's, high level experience. Yeah, and it seems that he's for all the talk that we had about who was going to play that left back position. You know, it seems like the, he's the left center, left center back, center back yeah. position. You know, it seems like he was, I mean, really consistent back there. Ends up having a couple of really, really critical tackles. I mean, him and Hyman both had a really great game. I mean, um, Mesa comes in and makes a slide tackle that without it ends up most likely being a really early goal. Um, so to see those kind of plays happening. So uh, that's right. So Mesa was left center back and then um, Castillo, right? Was um, Edgar Castillo. Yeah. He playing was, left he wing was back. Playing left wing back. Yeah. Um, uh, it was Will Balron saying it was uh, the money on LGP side. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, the, that little web we weave and have to navigate in MLS financials. It's fun and just so, so to that point, we we have another big news. Unless you have anything else on on the friendly last. Week. No, I mean last last Monday. I think you're probably going to allude to me saying something yeah. to the effect. Sean Sean Mack posted something to the effect of like, um, listening. We we recorded the night before Tito got sold, and yeah. there was no inclination that it was going to happen. Nobody. I mean, it just, it just kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. And we were talking about how, at least I was about how I thought his season was going to be a big one. And I guess for him, it is because he's going back, is. he's going back to Paraguay or going to Paraguay. I guess his dad's from Paraguay. Um, going to play for Libertad in what's reported to be a $4 million transfer by Roberto Rojas. But then Paul Tenorio came and said, he trusts, he has a, multiple sources uh, in MLS that are saying that it's more around the one and a half to two and a half million range. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And he's like essentially riding and dying with those sources. He's saying he doesn't trust what Roberto Rojas is saying. Well, hopefully it's not that because I guess we don't really know what the investment, the initial investment was from Atlanta United. We've always it was like two and a half. The speculation is between two and two and a half. So you hope that you're at least. I mean, I mean, it would be not weird. even right. I, I don't even. I don't even think I would be that disappointed if he was sold for less than two and a half million because at the end of the day, he played three years with us and he's on an you expiring would, contract. I think the only disappointment there is that you've seen the front office make moves that have all been in the black, and that would arguably be one to the contrary to that so i i don't know that I, and especially because they wouldn't have to make that move it would just seem like an odd play for the front office to make to take a loss on tito you know? it's not a loss though i i know that because you've, we could we could we could have lost we could have lost more if we let him go on a free after the season right i get it i get it because odds are if if frank it, so if you take into consideration why he was sold that means he wasn't going to get the playing time that he thought he was going to or that he wanted and if that was the case, he certainly would have re wouldn't have resigned with us next year. So we would have just taken a complete L on him. Yeah. Um, Brittany S says she needs coffee. We got decaf. Yeah, decaf indeed. Decaf um, indeed. Do you want to pull up? Can you pull up the? Uh, uh, no, you can't do screen share. But yeah. I mean, can you pull it up so that we can just kind of keep mm. tabs on it and we can? I'll try. Kind of keep everybody posted on on what's happening with it. To that point. Um, Brother, sister, uh, relative show uh, on the Home Before Dark Network, Solids and Stripes, will be putting out a new episode tomorrow covering the kit reveal and all things related to it. So, um, yeah, keep an eye out for that. It looks like there's still a few minutes before the kit reveal actually starts. So. Hey, hey, I got one thumbs up on my death grip comment. That makes me so happy. <laughs> such an there's idiot. one Atlanta United fan who knows who fit for a king is. <laughs> oh, that makes me happy. They put on such a good show. They put on such a good show. You should see them live. They're way better live. 
um so yeah we'll uh we'll try to go back and forth between that and provide any live updates with what's happening with the kit review and try not to crash my computer at the same time i will say um i saw a quick preview on instagram of will wearing the new kit and the concern i had about the patterning on the front is much more subtle than i expected it to be uh, that early kit reveal image leak made it seem like it was going to be a drastically different color or texture that was going to be noticeable. And based on what I could see, it looked subtle enough that it's not overly distracting. I really dig the new kit. I really do. I think it's a nice, clean look. Obviously, um, they can't show it in, in the thumbnail. He's obviously wearing a... Right? What? What? What are you talking about? Never mind. They can't show it in the thumbnail. He's obviously wearing. Never mind. What? I feel stupid. No, now you've got to say it because it sounds. Stupid. I feel stupid. Yeah, they're showing ha like half the kit, I guess. Or no, th this is the white kit, right? This is yes. the okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I'm not stupid. You made you looked at me like what? I'm saying Franco Escobar is wearing a red kit in the thumbnail. Yeah, that's yeah this not is the... for the kit reveal. Yeah. yeah, I'm just saying it's. It's like it's silly, but at the same time, they can't show oh, any of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So like a super zoomed in view of it. Yeah, I had no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's definitely the the white kit. Um, Brian's asking where the picture in picture is. We already have one copyright strike. I yeah. don't know where yeah. it came from. Or who reported it? Yeah. And I actually never even like investigate because they will let you know what got. You know what it probably was. Bubble stuff, the playing the Kanye, Kanye stuff, yeah, maybe, yeah. That but it was been. under thirty seconds though, and that's allowed. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know, because we don't we don't post the. Um... That's interesting. So Will says that the um, the authentic is subtle enough that it's going to just look like plain white, but that the replica is a very drastically different texture. So um, that'll be interesting to see how that how that really looks but that may be the way to go then I, I like the little detailing of the authentic this year more than i have in years past too the little um like on the yeah little tab the tab and then the inside of the bottom of the hem is really nice and then oh the other big thing this year that we haven't really mentioned so the two big things on the kit this year that were forced on the club in some regards is the three stripes on the shoulder Obviously, we know about that based on it being a club-wide initiative based on 25th year of MLS, I think. Yes, it's 25th. Yeah. So there's that, which all the clubs will have in some in some manner uh, incorporated on the new kits this year. And then the other aspect of that is the secondary logo on the sleeve, which for us is Piedmont. More money. Yeah. Yeah. And I think... AmFam is up next year. I don't know. If I would be surprised if they year. didn't if they didn't re it would up with seem them. Seem to be yeah. It would seem to make sense, but at the same time, with the success of the club, I'm sure that the. I mean, AmFam is not a small team or a small no, small company. No, it's definitely not. But I don't know. They're going to have to be. I I can't imagine that they're going to be getting in at what they got in for their initial investment for sponsorship. No. But at the same time, so they have a huge sponsorship with not just the shirt. They have a huge footprint inside of the the That's stadium. True. Like at, in 120 where Angie and I were for the first couple of years, they have a huge footprint. So they have, you know, green screen photos going on. They have a big photo mosaic on the wall. It's like stuff that I research for work. Like they have a bunch of that stuff going on. So I don't think they're going to not. Patrick Hansel says that he's pretty sure that AmFam already yeah. re upped. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, sponsorship for the shirt comes down to who's going to pay the most money. And I don't think that they're not Ooh, going to pay that. I didn't know that the new patch for MLS is also different. It like has okay, the that's, MLS 25. That's so clean. I really like it, dude. That Yeah, that shoulder. That's... And the little detail on the on the hem with the Atlanta United in gold, I, I dig it a lot. I, yeah. I really like the MLS patch too with the uh, – it's got like the multiple stars and it says MLS 25 or something like that on there. So, um, yeah, I really dig it. I'm, you know, to your point about the thumbnail with Franco, um, 
Is that a new training kit? What I was going to say, I, I, wonder that, if, yeah, I wonder if they're going to announce any of that. That's got to be what they're going to do, right? Yeah, I've wanted to get some. <laughs> I've wanted to get one of the training kits as well. The problem I had with it a couple of years ago oh, yeah, was belly that flap. stupid belly flap. Yeah. So hopefully they've they've remedied that and so, remedied that in some way. The remedy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice, very nice. <laughs> but yeah, I really like the new MLS. Patch. Andy says, "Stop saying clean. Clean is boring." <laughs> yeah, uh, whatever. It's very minimalistic. Very very minimalist. It yeah. is. It is. It, and it only has the one shoulder of stripes, just like in World of Warcraft or EverQuest when you got the pauldrons that only were on one side. But it yeah. was like a nice asymmetric look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure that there's a lot of reasons for why. I mean, they did that last year, right, where they called out why they did all of the different details and elements of the <laughs> they're going to give us like an infogra- uh, infographic yeah. on the on the yeah, jersey yeah. what means what yeah it's like the the pattern in the middle is because atlanta united's running over the competition dean says uh is he 30 minutes late yep yeah you definitely are yeah you definitely are yeah that toilet time took a little too long dean it took a <laughs> little too long okay so it's already over the live stream's already oh, over great i i like that that was just short and sweet and wasn't as involved as like last year's was a little ridiculous, right? I mean, I feel like we should spam the chat and be like, hey, come over here. <laughs> Do it. Do it now. Do it. Do it. <laughs> everybody, everybody go over into that live chat and say, come join us at Home Before Dark right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dean uh, Dean just got the notification. We're getting shadow banned. Shadow banned. <laughs> We're gonna demonetized for no reason. Uh, so yeah, I'm 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 a fan of the the white kit with the gold. I like it a lot. Yeah, I, I don't see what there isn't to like about. You it. know what I want is a third kit. I really I really, really love the Hawks peach tree jerseys. Yeah, that black and peach. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, it's good. It is nice. It's good. It is very nice. Yeah, I, I want that in a third kit. I'd love to have a third tip. A uh, third tip. <laughs> a third. A third tit. Is this total oh, recall? <laughs> oh shit! So I did come over here, Max McDonald. Yeah, from, from the. the uh, yeah, what's up, Max I like McDonald? It. I like it. Um, what do you guys think of the kit? We need we need instant reactions. Five words or less in the trap. I like it. Five stripes or less. Five stripes or less for thoughts on the new kit. We should do a dark away kit. That's seven. Too many. Said it's the too science case. Said feels too gold. Gold on white. Hmm. That's still too many, too many words for me to know. Stop saying clean so much. Yeah, Sanders. yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> Max McDonald, the uh, four nine two on Twitter on Periscope says, "Looks sleek and simple." Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. That that's. I mean, it goes, it goes really <laughs> well. It's a Hanes beefy <laughs> That's a good one. I yeah, like Andy that. Andy Watkins with five words saying it's a Hanes beefy tea. It would, it would be a good companion kit to Mike yeah. Mike Gorman's print, which is really good. Gorman, it is. Gorman. It's Gorman. Yeah, it's Gorman. Yeah, the ones that you um, the rock people from Zelda. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> where you get the where you mature? Isn't that where you mature in Ocarina of Time? Where you grow up? Uh, it's after that temple. Okay. No, you get the big Goron sword there. Yeah. That's right. You, you get you got to get all of those, and then you take it back to the castle to get the to go forward in time. Yeah. Once you do those first three <laughs> temples. All right. What's your favorite Ocarina song from that song from them? Is that the Epona one where you call Epona? I don't remember what it is. And how does I used to have them all memorized? Okay, I want to know if it came down to the Epona song or or the Green Ranger song to call his Zord. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. I want to see those side by side. I need a I need a poll. I need a Twitter poll. Um, so back to the squad. We did, we did get a new signing. No, we have we have a couple new ones. So, so we we didn't talk we too didn't, much about Tito. We didn't finish Tito stuff. So yeah. So what? It made sense. Yeah. It really absolutely made sense. I mean, it didn't. So on Monday night last week, 
we thought that he was going to factor into the squad, especially Julian Gressel leaving. And because that didn't seem to be the case with management, it made perfect sense to let him go. Yeah. And especially if you're going to get, again, it's, it's a matter of Julian Gressel and Tito both being on expiring contracts and you getting a lot of allocation money for both of them. It's smart business sense. They're both mid twenties. Um, that's the other thing. Brooks Lennon is what? 21, 22. He's pretty young. Yeah. He's a couple I want to say he's a couple years younger than Julian Gressel. Um, I, it made sense to me. I'm happy for it. He seems very happy to be down there. Yeah. Um, and I think he's going to get a lot of playing time. He's still a great player, man. He I just agree. didn't fit in with the squad. I agree. And I think it's just going to, for me, whether or not it ends up being a good deal or not is, I, I don't think Atlanta ends up taking, again, to your point, it's not really a loss. We've gotten some return on investment. Just yeah, Brooks Lennon is 22 years just old. Just in his involvement in the club the past few years. But at the same time, financially, I would like to get some sort of a payoff of him going to you're hoping to buy low sell high but even if it's breaking even on that initial investment you know yeah for sure that's i mean it, it, to, to me again I, i'm of the mindset that you pay the two and a half million for him he's brought more than that back into the club over the course of his contract in three years and then to bring back even more money on a transfer fee on oh, an see, expiring michelle contract buy low, sell high. yeah buy low sell high correct michelle but that's not always possible and it's not but we got what appears to be at the end of the day, what three quarters of a million dollars in allocation money. But it depends on if the if the amount is what you're saying. If it's one and a half to two, or if it's four that was originally touted, and it sounds like it may be. Yeah, that's true. Closer to the two million dollar range, which is a little. I mean, again, if it's if we are at least close to breaking even, that's a little bit easier to swallow on my part than if it's a if it's a huge loss. I would obviously prefer for it to be. 750 in gam or tam or bam bam or whatever the fuck it is and then the rest of it allocated to dp expenses which would be nice but yeah i have no idea jack abrams saying siempre united podcast in espanol yep yeah yeah you guys if, if you guys if you guys are fluent in spanish go listen to them they're they're great guys we love those guys so they're apparently there's new uh scarves as well, Bill reports, which is shiny scarves. Is it all gold? How much are they going for on eBay? Has anybody checked eBay yet for them? Is that still a thing? Is scarf is the scarf black market still a thing? I think it might be washed out at this point. Okay. I mean, I'm sure that there's some that people are really trying to track down and get, but there's so many. They have I mean, they have a new one every month. I can't imagine. Yeah. I feel like like everything after a certain point, the saturation becomes so much that people aren't as excited. I wonder what the parlay kit's going to look like this year. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. You know, at a certain point, if that that's still um, my kit. if that boy on slot guy keeps at it, there's not going to be a parlay kit anymore <laughs> in a couple of years. I know right? he's cleaning up the ocean <laughs> so quickly. We know that had a, that it was a massive failure for like the first year. Yeah, they just were burning money. Nothing yeah. was happening. Burn the plastic instead. That's yeah, what I say. Exactly. Patrick Hansel says, I just don't see a Paraguayan team paying $4 million for a player. It's probably the lower number. Yeah, well, and that was what the article even mentioned, right? It's like that would be a record signing for that club. Which, he's a national team player. He's a name. The other thing that I read was it's potentially a bidding war. It was a, a bidding war that Libertad won and Libertad is backed in ownership maybe by the former president or prime minister, whatever the, the head of state is for Paraguay. So I think they have deep pockets. So I don't know if they just are flush with cash. Yeah. But interesting. Either way, I, I to me, again, getting that money back, I, you know, yeah, Joe, they did go to uh, Blue this past year, if you're t if you're still talking about... I, I don't even know. You're just naming colors now. I, I, I'm going back up through the trap. And you're uh, just... I want a burnt Sienna one. Yeah. I'm just looking to see if there's another fun Meow Wolf kit, because that was my favorite purchase <laughs> last year. Yeah. I didn't... I feel like I need to buy a kit this year. Yeah, you didn't get anything last year, did I you? I did not. I finally got my King Peach, just because they had the... It was the first it was the new kit that we got the year we won the cup and had the star and all that. Cause I really hated the home. I hate the home kits right now so much. Really? I really don't like them. The, huh. 
it's the stamp. It's the tramp stamp more than anything. Okay. I, I just everything else I'm I'm okay with for the most part. I just hate the backs of the the current home kits so much. I, I that's one that'll be an easy pass for me. You did get one last year. You got the pride kit. Oh yeah, you're right. Those were really nice. Yeah. I yeah, I love that kit and it fits so well. Yeah, I really liked those. Yeah, I, my years are running together. Yeah. I, oh, it felt like I didn't buy anything last year, but you're right. We did get those like early access. Yeah. We we hopped on those immediately. Yeah. Um, so that was that was definitely it's adjust. interesting because right now we're getting four or five kits, even though the main kit turnover is yeah. just the one. We're there really what are like the, four that come out every year. So there's the camo one that we had last year for military appreciation. There was Fourth of July kit. The Fourth of July kit. There was the Pride, Pride kit. kit. Parlay kit. Yeah, and then you had King Peach or um, the, the new, new home, home kit. kit. Yeah. yeah, so that's five. So you're you're assuming this year is going to be another five, essentially that, you know, <sighs> including yeah. this one. So just filling up that closet. Yeah, just filling up that closet. But it's good because it's, there's enough variety that if you if you're not crazy about one, chances are there'll be another one over the course of the season that you might dig and be able to get one of. Yeah. I hate that the parlay kits are so limited, though. That's that's really a bummer. Yeah, you would think it would make sense to make as yeah. many of them as you can. Yeah. If if the whole point is recycling right. the plastic, because those have been my favorites consistently. Of course, because you're plastic. Years. Well, yeah, obviously. Fucking plastic. I know. I Fantastic. Know. Yeah, I, I loved I, I loved those the past two years. Those are really fun. So I. Wish Tito all the luck. He's probably my favorite player of the past three years for Atlanta United. Um, he's always come in, worked his ass off, done a great job. He's always seemed to be a good locker room guy. Uh, great for morale. And uh, That's the new scarf, Andy. just texted it over to me. That's actually really cool. Looking. I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. Yeah, We're going to have to get one for the wall. Yeah. I mean, we've gotten one for... We got the King Peach, and then... Yeah. They didn't do anything really special last year. I guess they did do the... Uh, what was it, Kings? But did they do a Kings Become Legend one for playoffs? I'm assuming we didn't. I don't know. One, we didn't get one of those, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, anything else on Tito? Uh, no. I, I I'll reserve judgment until I find out what the the final sale amount was. But initial reports seem favorable either way. Even if it's right. on the low end, but it's close to what we paid for them, I'm okay with that. Yeah, some of that money is freed up, and then we also just spent some money. I want to know: Do you pronounce it matches? Or do you pronounce it Matthias? Matthias? I know Portuguese is a little uh, strange with like the TH or the T with a, a vowel following it. So I, I don't know. Oh, right. Anyway, uh, Matthias Matias uh, Rosetto from Atletico Paranense. We picked him up. He's but the South American pipeline is going to be shut down because yeah. of Frank DeBoer. Yeah, Frank DeBoer is European. So let's he's going to want to switch how us many, to a completely. I was going to say, how many South American signings have we had so far this year compared to just uh, one? Is it really just the one? No, no, no. You're right. There are two. Yeah. Meza. Yeah. yeah. And then Edgar Casti is American. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is. So Andy's saying Matias. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay, so Jack Abrams is saying Machias. That's what I... Th so I thought the T before a vowel was a CH in, in Portuguese. That's what I thought. Okay. All right. Or Mateus. I, I don't know. What's up, Octavio? Roctav El Roctavio. Uh, enjoy yeah. It's, thanks, for, uh, thanks for joining us. Coach Steve is in the trap now. Um, yeah, look at how skinny my face has gotten, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's uh that is shit. I feel like mine's back to that, that <laughs> after packing it on. Jarring. Um so I think it's mostly the beard. We needed beard we so needed cool. a midfield presence. He seems to be a good buy. Um our buddy Igor, who I work with, was not necessarily sold whenever I talked to him about it the other day, saying that, you know, his his playtime numbers over the past year have not been mm great but at the same time i can't remember who it was people I, I it's probably one of the fine folks at dirty south soccer um that posted a chart of play time for joseph lgp tito and yamil Assad before coming to atlanta and yeah. it was all they were kind of out of favor with their teams whenever they came in the kid apparently he definitely has talent watch you know 
you're kind of relegated to watching highlight film, right? You know, Scout Nation or whatever the the highlight film that comes up on YouTube. He seems like he can control the ball in the midfield. He can make plays. He can create for people. He can score when he needs to. He seems to be a good buy. Yeah. And does that free up? I, I know that people keep yelling Heinemann isn't the Nagby replacement. I still think that you can't replace Nagby, but I think that Heinemann fills a role in that in that place and then maybe bring in Rosetto to play as, alongside him. Or it's depth piece for if Barco or Pitti get out of, I mean, you've got to have the depth players. It's, I don't know if it's necessarily a starting player in the lineup based on what it is currently and what it's been in the preseason, but we've seen year in and year out that that depth is going to get challenged. Barco started 11 games last year. Yeah. You know, it's that's why Jack, a- Jack Abrams came coming into the trap. I think the first time I've seen that name in here. Welcome and thank you for uh, dropping knowledge. He said they got a new coach and the new coach changes position. He didn't play good in the new position. So that's why he didn't get as much playing time as before. I feel the same thing can be said about Tito, right? Yeah. I mean, and sometimes those things don't mean that the player's bad. It's just a bad fit for the system. And yeah. So I think that lends some credence to the fact that maybe Tito will be better off and, and vice versa. I mean, Castillo is the same way, right? Like he had a great year with Colorado. Then last year he ends up getting the injury. And or two years ago it was with Colorado. Last year with New England. Yeah, getting, last year he didn't have the broken yeah. ribs and all that and ends up be, didn't have like a really great season. But a couple of years ago, was was having a really good season. So I'm pretty I'm not feeling so bad about the left back position. Not, not either. Yeah. I mean, between him and Mulraney and, and Bello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Especially if we're gonna go into this season playing three in the back. And w- with that being the intent of having four midfielders. Seems to be that way. I'm and seeing the way that the the midfielders were able to drop back and cover and have the awareness of when players were moving and shifting with one another to drop back and make the that coverage. I mean, it's not perfect, and it was against a subpar opponent. But I think, I mean, that's what you want to see. That's what these games are for: is to start to figure that stuff out and build on it. One thing I will say is that the team looks extremely fast which we did not see last Dude, year. I'm so excited about that because obviously I, I don't think that Brooks Lennon is going to be linking up his crosses so quickly with, with Joseph. But what gets me so excited about that and Mulraney is that, and I think Michelle mentioned it with how fast Mulraney is, the two of them bombing up and down the wings is awesome and scary for, for any teams that they're going up against. Because what, what is a constant in MLS? Fullbacks suck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, being able to right. being able to attack the fullbacks, the subpar fullbacks in, in MLS. So I mean Kamara Lawrence is gone. Yeah. He left New York Rebels. Yeah. But, you know, somebody said Tito's gone, so he has no <laughs> he's got he has no challenge. He's got nothing to play for in MLS <laughs> yeah. anymore. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting to see how this team grows and, and plays. You know, we're we're just two weeks out now from our first real match. We've got the Birmingham game on the 18th. It's on and then, next... No, it's this Saturday, isn't it? Or is it next Saturday? Uh, not even next Saturday. It's next Tuesday, the 18th. Friday, oh, Friday. For some reason, I was thinking it was this Friday, weekend. Next Friday is the 14th, and then it'd be that following Tuesday. Yeah, and then we so have our CCL game. CCL game would be the, the following 25th. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 25th. Justin Johnson back in the trap. Been a minute and... And late, but love the midfield pickup. We need that. I think we need one more for right wing to spell Lennon. Uh, maybe he said, like how we're adding, uh, like how we're adding some quality depth to the team. Agreed. Yeah, people need to stop panicking. Yeah, people need to stop panicking. This is a trust this the is fo. A, yeah, exactly. And this is a depth, or get the fo. Yeah, exactly. This is a depth <laughs> building off season. Yeah. You're not. We talked about it last show. We're not here. We're not restructuring around major DP signing. That's what Michelle says this Saturday at 4 p.m. against Birmingham. That's what I thought as well. Is it really? Yeah. Why did I think it was the 18th? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why you thought that. Wow. Are we doing Nashville? I have shit going on on the 29th that I can't really get out of. Are you going to go? Are you going to make the trek up to Nashville? I am. Um... I'm going to be a game week decision, honestly. Jason uh, Coles in the trap. What's up, man? It's the 18th for CCL. Oh, okay. So CCL is the 18th. Okay. I'm an That's idiot. the away leg, right? And then the, the, yeah, and then and the, the home, home leg is the on the 25th. 25th. Yeah. 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 Okay. Holy shit, man. It's, it's here before. 
I thought it was. Yeah. So this weekend. So I wonder, surely they're going to be streaming it, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not Yahoo, right? Somebody bought the rights to stream CCL from Yahoo, and I can't Thank remember God, who it is. Yahoo is not great. It might be Bleacher Report. Uh, Interesting. I can't remember. Does anybody know who who bought the rights from or who took over CCL from from Yahoo? Okay, so I had the 18th right. It was just CCL. Apologies, sorry everybody. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're two weeks away from less than two weeks really from our first major game. So that's great. And it, I, it, what, uh, Fox Fox okay. picked it up. Yeah, Valentine's Day CCL watch party at Tim's house. Yeah. Well. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> I guess that's happening. <laughs> I guess that's happening. I'll just, somebody dox me. Um, no, you can't do it. <laughs> it won't, it's not on Valentine's Day. It's the Tuesday. No, I know. It's on a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like what Octavio says. He said, we don't rebuild. We reload, sir. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Very. Okay. Um, anything else about signings or... What else? What else we got? What else? What else? What else? CCL is coming up. Thoughts okay. on? Have you? I mean, be honest. Do you? Have you? Looked no. At, yeah. I mean, I haven't. I have. I'm, what does anybody know about? Um, Mont 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 Matagua? No. Motagua. Monta Montagua. Monta Mont Monta. I Motaro. It's definitely not that. We're not playing Motaro. No. <laughs> because I think people can't hear that. Kevin just ripped ass. <laughs> Good thing you can't hear that Kevin just farted. <laughs> it just sounded like a bass drop. <laughs> I think Skrillex uh, is going to use uh, that in no. his next... Is that still a relevant reference? This thing was coming in hot. Is Skrillex still a relevant... I don't think it is. A thing? I think it's Marshmallow now. It's Marshmallow. Marshmallow is the DJ reference. Who are the kid? Yeah, is that the kids? Or no, or Steve Aoki. Steve He's back... What do you mean he's back? Did he leave? Like he's back to being the it thing? Dude, he's been DJing for like 10 billion years, I don't right? Know, he's man. like 60 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany has said, nope, not a thing. Skrillex <laughs> is not. <laughs> Sounded like the Mandy trailer. Just wah, wah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? Patrick Hansel says Tim was right the first time. Uh, what is that? Matagua? Matagua. Mont yeah. Montague. Montagues and Capulets is what Coach Coach Steve is saying. Yeah. Got it. Nailed yeah. We it. I think we don't get your guys your guys' comments start flooding in. Yeah. Once I think it's, it goes on a delay. And Dude, Brian, just, Brian knows <laughs> Brian <laughs> speaking my language. Need girl talk to come back. We do. But we, he's, we, we, he's we, got we, all those cease and desist he's still in court for. Is he really? I know that he got in a lot of shit for all those samples. God, dude, I can still like, in my head play Feed the Animals from start to finish. What sucks about Girl Talk is it ruined every one of those songs oh, yeah. whenever I listened to it because then it'd get to the point where he sampled it and I would just yeah, <laughs> just start singing the next part yeah. from the girl talk stuff. Every every time you hear uh every time you hear nothing compares by <laughs> Sinead O'Connor. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly what it is. God, dude, I do miss girl talk. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put that on at the gym tomorrow. Yeah, that is a good like work and gym. Yeah, because it's like constantly rotating, right? I mean, how are there any other bands that you can think of or artists that have which is rat a tat, which is pretty yeah, much the same thing true. as girl talk. That's yeah. true. Um, and maybe I've just not been <laughs> in touch with it, but yeah. <laughs> oh, Matthew. So yeah, Love I, you, I do need to put that on yeah. at the gym tomorrow. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, so I've been looking at Roberto Rojas's Twitter pretty, um, not, not like stalkerishly, but like, just constantly Have you DM'd him yet? No. You guys got a date set up? He's not following us. Oh. We're following him. He's not following us. Fuck that. No, but I am constantly refreshing his his feed because it he's got the in with the Paraguayan media. Um and has all the or anyway with uh with the sources down yeah, there. And yeah. Just hoping that we we sign those other two Paraguayans. You think that's still gonna happen? At There's still point? time and we still got caught like a lot of money in the coffers. Yeah. If you get Viasanti and and Arzamendia, even though like we were just talking about, we have we're kind of three deep at left wing back now, especially if we're going to deploy a, a three 
three in the back and put wing backs in the in the midfield. I just want to make an Arzamandia shirt. Arzamandia, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really like in Watchmen. Yeah, find a way um, to turn that in. Yeah, something. Justin Johnson and, and Brian with the same sentiments. Justin saying, "Just got this feeling, PD and Barco are going to ball out this year." Call me optimistic, but well, still, you see the way that they're linking up in the the match footage that we've had so far early on. Again, it's a small sample size. These games don't really matter much in the big scheme of things, but that's what you want to see them building on um, and finding that overlap and finding that link up play. And they seem to be building that consistently. Yeah. yeah. I I smell a merch idea. Coach Steve, I'm down for a pity party. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. And Brian saying pity year two, prepare thyself. I yeah. agree. I can't wait, man. The, the impact he's going to have on the team, he seems very comfortable. He seems a lot more confident in the ball, and um, he's scoring a lot. Yeah. Um, no, Justin, no. Uh, we the we paid down. So Justin's Justin Johnson asking, we still got one DP s- uh, spot now, right after after Tito leaving, and it was um, Tito was a Tam guy. Yeah. Um, we paid down his DP slot in 2018. Yep. To to pave the way for. PD to come in, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so, anything else this week? Oh, PB and J. I love it. PD, Barco, and Joseph. Ooh. I like yeah. I like, I like it. I like it. I like it. It's going to be the Sammy of the year. That's every year. Every single Peanut butter and jelly is like John Williams at the Oscars. Is that his name? The guy who does the Star Wars scores? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer's a better one. Yeah. It's a good one. Yeah. It's like but what the, about that fluff or another though? Ooh. Did you ever do the triple decker peanut butter and jellies? Yeah. Okay. You're talking about like Big Mac style? Yeah. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Do a regular one and but then no, just, no jelly. Oh, fuck off. That's just I wasn't a jelly kid. I ate peanut butter sandwiches. With Hershey syrup on it. No, with chicken sometimes. Gross. Yeah. I was kind of like gross. A satay before yeah. you do a satay. <laughs> 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 It was a Carl Buttig lunch meat satay. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> it's a Lando <laughs> That's Frost. That's so disgusting. <laughs> can I get a chicken satay? But can you make it with Lando Frost? That's so gross. <laughs> you just get the shaved roll, lunch just meat. Get a roll of the like turkey roll up. Just yeah. Dip it in there. <laughs> oh man, my brother used to eat the Carl Buttig lunch meat by the pack. That's so just gross. Pop That's it out. So gross. Yeah. Oh man. So. uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's really nice. But yeah, I would do the triple decker. Yeah. yeah. Do three pieces of bread, but I would do peanut butter on both layers. What is wrong with you? On so on four sides, right? Yeah. 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 So I would do it top and bottom of the middle, and then I would do it yeah. on the top. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, because I don't want to be able to breathe. Otherwise, it's just two sandwiches. I don't want to be able to open my mouth again. Yeah. Or even swallow that. <laughs> yeah. It just goes down like you're eating golf balls. Have just- you, so you got you got a soda stream recently. Yeah. Have you done milk in the soda stream? <laughs> no, but I do the nitro cold brew. I just stick my coffee in there. It no, doesn't work. It's not good. <laughs> I haven't done that. I have. <laughs> it is horrible. So I want to see what all everything tastes like carbonated. Oh, sweet tea? Nope, that doesn't work. I, no, it doesn't. I tried it. <laughs> I really I don't know if they do that. Somebody's got to oh, brave these things. This kombucha is getting flat. I'm just going to give it another juice. <laughs> this is how, this this how is they carbonate how it, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Oh, gross. Did you really try to carbonate milk? <laughs> no, I didn't do milk. <laughs> I didn't do milk. I know Especially better. Especially <laughs> because of the bubbles to begin with. That's going to be a terrible idea. Just it's you a, making that. a bomb in your house. <laughs> Just, it's like whenever you put the works and tinfoil into a soda bottle. Did you ever make those little explosives as a kid? No. Okay. So the works is a like toilet bowl cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. So you put that in a plastic bottle and ball up little pieces of aluminum foil. You were making Molotov cocktails. Put it in there. That's twist, napalm. <laughs> twist the lid, shake it up, and you just. <laughs> And you don't have any shrapnel scars? I grew up in the middle of nowhere, South Carolina. We didn't have anything else to do. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> oh, I can't believe matter? you never did that. No. The only thing I did similar to that is like 
Sorry, it is the last five minutes of the show. This is typically where it's we go. Just us talking about our silly lives. Just it's our silly lives. We'll start doing this at the end so you guys can cue <laughs> and time out. Um or zone out. No, the only thing we did similar to that we, you were involved in or were you picked up by the cops whenever we did that? No, fuck off. <laughs> Whenever we lit Casey's armpit on fire, <laughs> no, were you there for gone. that? I was gone at that point. <laughs> yeah, that was after me. Yeah, we um we were the kids. We were all straight edge in in high school, and um our buddy, we would go and whatever you want to call it, party at his house when his parents were gone, and they had a liquor cabinet, and we would get into the liquor cabinet, but it wasn't to drink; it was to make explosives out of or to set fires. So. We made egg bombs. Yeah. So took the syringe and like oh, squirted God. all, like pushed all the the egg out of the shell and then filled it with vodka and tried <laughs> to make Molotov cocktails. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Definitely doesn't work. And then, um, and then no, we did light hairspray, hairspray and a lighter. Yeah, that, yeah, definitely, that, works. Works. that definitely works. That definitely works. works. Um, Justin's asking if we noticed that Miles look bigger in the kit reveal. Um, I mean, that's that's dangerous for. To, is there a is I need it's to, dangerous for MLS attackers if if Miles Robinson Brian is going to be bigger. Brian mentioned that Toronto's kit is trash. I need to look at. I wonder. So I'm surely how many kit re- have, are, are all the kit reveals going on tonight? I think so. I mean, we've seen Orlando's, we've seen ours, um, I've seen a handful of them. I'm sure somewhere we'll have a link to all of them that we'll need to look through and digest. But so, anything else tonight? Um, Bill Holcomb on Twitter saying, "Help me out here. Did authentic MLS jerseys go up by twenty dollars in price this year?" Yes. Yeah. Apparently, that it's sucks to pay for those fancy patches. Yeah. But you know they'll all go on and sale in the last the, couple of weeks. And then the Atlanta United jerseys. Percy posted this. Percy Herrera. Um, the jerseys right now, the authentics are uh, a pre-sale item. And they don't actually ship. They have a tentative ship date of the twenty eighth. Let's hope they don't go the way of the the outcast um, <laughs> did varsity those, jacket. Did those ever get shipped I or delivered? I don't know. What a joke! I don't know. What a joke! I forgot all about that. Does anybody know if those ended up going? Who was it? Who did we know that Devin was the one who got and J and J? They bought the outcast. Uh, uh, varsity, jackets, varsity jackets. Varsity jackets. That was for the Super Bowl last year. And then they were like, "Oh yeah, they'll they'll ship. They'll ship eventually." Yeah. And yeah. Like they weren't cheap. No. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that those ever did. That's hilarious. I forgot all about that. All right. It's um, not hilarious for the people who got screwed out of their money. Womp womp. Uh. Yeah. Anything else? No. Is this two weeks in a row we recorded? Yeah. yeah. Wow. We're doing it. Wow. Man. We're back. In the words of uh, <clears throat> Owen Wilson, wow. So, however you found us, be sure to hit a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe, stars, and leave a review on iTunes to hear it read aloud on the show. Love to tell us about our silly lives. We're at 187, 13 away from. Oh yeah, so we did get uh, we did get some new reviews, four new ratings, ratings. yeah, four new ratings, one review, and it was a two star, which which is awesome. So thank you guys. I mean, however it's coming in, we appreciate it. So thirteen away from two hundred, which is we have to compete with two dirty South soccer feeds. I don't know how they get away with that. Yeah, uh, it's really yeah. yeah. Oh, speaking of which, you want to announce next week? We yes, we will have at least double feature. Well, not next week. Oh, it's the week, week after. after. Week after. Well, we'll have next week. Yeah, we'll have at least Eric Quintana of Mouse of the South. Your guys' favorite punching bag, and Josh Bagranski may be able to come. I mean, he's got big boy things that happen at yeah. night. Yeah. He coaches right. middle school soccer, I believe, right. or maybe it's high school soccer, North North Druid Hills. Um, hopefully, I didn't say too much. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're gonna trade appearances with them, go on the radio in two weeks. Yeah, that's gonna be a disaster. I'm gonna have to start. I'm gonna have to. Coach. The, I'm gonna yeah. go ahead and tell the producers to get that eight second yeah. uh, drop the, ready. Yeah, I need, to, <laughs> I need to get a shot collar for next week yeah. to start training myself. For. I think I only had a couple tonight. I can. I think I can manage it. Yeah. No, just it's fine. Just just think I'm about it drinking. the entire time. Yeah, that's drinking. true. You're not drinking. There's no brown liquor sieving <laughs> exactly. around. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, uh, be sure to leave a rating or review. However, you found us, we appreciate the hell out of all of you. Uh, find us individually on social media. Tim's been posting a little bit more on his Instagram, which has been nice to see. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out because I, I mostly post my wife, the dog, and woodworking, and I'm trying to think of ways that we can I can I can work that into merch this year for yeah for the Atlanta United. I like it. 
I, I would love like if Crowd. we could both come together and do a couple of things. Yeah. So where can they find you at? You can find me at Tim Herb. Find me as well at the architect. That's at the underscore ARC number one T E C T collectively at home before dark on all platforms. That's before spelled B and the number four. Um, if you stick around, yeah, stick around. We are going to do bubble stuff tonight with Angie and talk about some other stuff that we're working on. Ooh, so. ooh, ooh. Brian says, wait, wait, Jones, Reyes, uh, John Jones. I, I don't think there's any way. I don't think Dominic Reyes is impressive. Don't get me wrong. What he did to Chris Weidman was eh, Weidman's chin's been suspect for a few years, but what he did was still very impressive. He's still undefeated for a reason. He's very dangerous, but John Jones is the greatest of all time. He's as much as I hate to say it. He's going to, he's going to work Dominic Reyes. Michelle, somebody gave us a thumbs down. It's okay. It happens. It happens. It happens. It happens. All right. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next week. As always be home before dark.